Hello, welcome to Vedil Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see about Edman's reagent. Using Edman's reagent, we are going to see N-terminal analysis of peptides or proteins. This particular video is based on gate 22 question. So, the question is this. A tripeptide on treatment with phenyl isothiocyanate at pH 8 followed by heating with dilute HCl afforded a cyclic compound YUM and a dipeptide. The dipeptide on treatment with phenyl isothiocyanate at pH 8 followed by heating with dilute HCl afforded a cyclic compound N and an acyclic compound O. The correct sequence from N to C terminus of the tripeptide is four options are given. So, this is a question where the N terminal analysis of a small tripeptide is being done. And this question says there are three fragments and two fragments are cyclic fragments and the fourth fragment is a acyclic fragment. So, we will first see what is the reaction and how is this tripeptide sequenced. And then how can we arrive at the answer? Find the sequence of amino acids in this tripeptide. So, first and foremost, when we see the reagent phenyl isothiocyanate, we know this is actually Edman's reagent. So, when we are doing N-terminal analysis, Edman's reagent is a popular reagent that is used. So, we will first see Edman's degradation. So, what is Edman's degradation or Edman's N terminal analysis of peptides? So, let us assume a pictorial representation of a peptide sequence. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 are actually amino acids. So, this is a tetrapeptide sequence that is presented here. So, when, a, when we are having 4 peptides in a molecule, how can we sequence them? How do we find the order in which these amino acids are arranged? So, for that, there are various methods. You would have studied Sanger's method uh, and then C-terminal analysis using carboxypeptidases are very popular. But the most popular and successful method is the advanced method because advanced method is actually an automated method. It is also called as Edman's degradation. So, why is this called as an automated method and how is this degradation happening or the sequencing happening is what we will see in this video first. So, the reagent that is used is phenyl isothiocyanate, PITC. It is a popular acronym for this particular reagent. Biochemists will call it as Edman's reagent. So, now I have just shown a pictorial representation of how the reaction could happen. So, there is a tetrapeptide. So, the first step will be the coupling reaction of the Edman's reagent with the amino acid that is the N terminal amino acid and after that we are having hydrolysis. The hydrolysis will break, break the bond and lead to a N terminal protected amino acid. It is protected with the phenyl isothiocyanate group and then this can be analyzed to find out what is this one. Now, the remaining chain can again be sub subjected to phenyl isothiocyanate to form the coupled product and then again hydrolysis to remove the second amino acid. So, each amino acid can be cleaved and each of them could be studied using HPLC technique because we know there are only 20 naturally occurring amino acids in our biological system. All amino acids are L amino acids and there are 20 naturally occurring amino acids and because there are only 20, so preparing a duct of this particular reagent is very easy. So, that reagent can be used as a reference to find out the amino acid. This is how the sequencing is done. 
So this step can be repeated again and again till we find the sequence of amino acids present in this particular peptide. So let us see the chemistry of this particular reaction. So when you look at the chemistry, this is the reagent, phenyl isothiocyanate. So this isothiocyanate is reacted upon by the amino group of the amino acid part of the peptide. So when we are having a peptide chain, we should know the, the amino end is called as the N terminal, N capital N, N terminal. And the carboxyl end is called as the C terminal. So we are concerned about the N terminal of the amino acid chain so or the peptide chain. So the lone pair attacks the carbon and as a result, you see an adduct being formed. And finally, we get N phenyl thiourea. So this N phenyl thiourea then leads to the cyclization to form a thiazolinone derivative. So this is an important derivative that results by cyclization of the adduct. So this N phenyl thiourea cyclizes to thiazolinone adduct. So this thiazolinone adduct is a separate entity. This is how the amino acid gets cleaved out and then you get the uh, remaining peptide chain. And as I told you in the earlier general sequence, this amino end will react with another phenyl thiocyanate and will be subjected to subsequent steps again. And this thiazolinone derivative is then converted into phenyl thiohydantoin. So this is in the presence of an acid uh, catalyzed reaction. This is converted to thiazolinone is converted to phenyl isothiohydantoin. So this phenyl isothiohydantoin that is PTH derivative of every amino acid is known. So by referencing it using either paper chromatography or using HPLC, we can find out the amino acid that is present. So a point to note in this particular scheme is how or which part is the amino acid. So if you know pretty well, an amino acid has uh, an amino end and a carboxyl end. So I have put the box. So this is the amino acid part. So when you look at this particular part of the hydantoin, you will get to know the amino acid that has cleaved from this structure. But experimentally, we can find out only by making use of either paper chromatography or HPLC. Structurally, by looking at the structure, it is very easy for, for us to see which part of this particular PTH is the amino acid. So this gives us a clue to identify the amino acid that is cleaved in a question similar to the one that we are going to see now. So in the question, these were the amino acids that were mentioned glycine, alanine, valine, tyrosine, phenylalanine. These were the options that were there in the choices that were given. And I have marked out how these amino acids are different. So glycine, we must know, is the only amino acid that is optically inactive because the fourth group that is not mentioned here is hydrogen in all the amino acids. So only in glycine, this is a methylene group, CH2 group. Whereas in all other amino acids, there are four different groups present. So all amino acids are optically active amino acids except glycine. And then it is easy for us to remember the names of the amino acid. So uh, alanine is when the hydrogen is replaced by methyl. Valine is when the hydrogen is replaced by an isopropyl group. Tyrosine is when the hydrogen is replaced by a CH2 and then para hydroxy group. And then phenylalanine is when the CH2, see it is similar to alanine, CH3, one hydrogen is replaced by a phenyl group. That is why it's called as a phenylalanine. So the difference between phenylalanine and tyrosine is only an OH group. So it's very easy for us to remember the structure of the amino acids. And then it is very easy for us to identify the products. So now let us see the products that were given there. Yum is given. So as I told you, indicated to you, how do we demarcate? So we know S and N is part of the um, phenyl isothiocyanate. 
similarly here also i am marking out and in the last uh, product there is no adduct because uh, it is an empty fragment and so it is an amino acid itself so this amino acid is similar to that of valine so o is valine so no doubt at all now coming to m and n so if you see n again there is a phenyl group in n so the only amino acid that you can think of is tyrosine and phenylalanine but this is only a phenyl group this is not a para hydroxy group so undoubtedly this amino acid is phenylalanine and now coming to m m again you see here this is the carbon and there is no other substituent here so there are two hydrogens so definitely this is glycine so this is glycine this is phenylalanine and the last one is valine that is all so now going back to the question so there are three options that are given here so from the n terminal we have to see so the first amino acid that is uh, coming out is m then the second one is n and the last so the answer is glycine phenylalanine valine and the tripeptide is this so a is the correct answer hope you understood thank you